手加減してるっていうのかお前はどれだけ俺を惨めにさせたら気が済むんだミディさんダメだ Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Savoy's channel. Today we're building the real great Unicorn Gundam 02 Banshee Norn. And I finally got it like、uh, last week. And now I can finally build it. Like, I'm so excited for this. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is kind of <clears throat> in a bad condition now. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven packages. And a very thick、uh, instruction book down at the bottom. Oh, you know, just quickly flip through it. Weapons and backpack unit. Shield. Uh, so now this is the transforming process, right? Oh, this is the transforming process. Alright, let's look at the back. So we got some color guide the pilot figure color guide and the decals、uh, position. So we got about 90 of them, probably, yeah? Right, it took me、uh, quite a long time to kind of unbox all of this because you know that's a lot of pieces. So, this is the L2 runner, this is the、uh, mainly the、uh, beam mega cannon part, and this is the P part. This is, I believe, this is the waist and the side skirt. No, okay,、uh, that's the K part. This is the backpack. And the pilot figure, and not sure which part was that. Oh, that's the head actually. That's the, this is the sea runner, this is the torso, and head parts, beam sabers. Yep, this is the M1 part.、Uh, I believe this is just some joint for the MS end frames. This is the D1 runner, we got a shield. Uh, waist part, shoulders,、uh, legs, and some、uh, lower leg and arms part. Yep. This is、uh, A1 runner, clear orange. This is the、uh, all the cycle frames on the MS. We can see some shield ones,、uh, some back waist, some、uh, shoulder ones, and arms ones. This is the G runner. We got the hand options,、uh, some inner frame of the legs,、uh, some part of the torso, waist part, thrusters, and arms unit. This is the O runner.、Uh, this is the mainly on the backpack. This is the F runner.、Uh, this is the. I don't really know which part is this. This is just some part of the outside armor. H runner, blind gold. And this is definitely the legs part, the backpack unit, uh, feet, uh, the head, and the thrusters.、Yep. This is the M runner, shield, mainly shield parts. L1 runner,、uh, not sure which part was it. Uh, J, J runner backpack and some torso part as well, and the face mask.、Um, this is the I1 runner. This is the gun,、uh, mainly the gun part and some other waist part as well. This is the large runner of the large runners.、Uh, F,、uh, this is the E1 runner, the legs part, the uh, shoulders, uh, no, not the shoulders, the arms part, and Some part of the backpack. And we got two effect parts. So we got the beam sabers one and the、uh, gun unit one. And we got a very large amount of decals. And the clear orange mixed with,、uh, you know, sort of a gray color、uh, MS frame. 
Yep. Okay. Well, this is gonna take a long time to build, so I would see you guys at review. Hello and welcome back to the review of the RG uh, Banshee Norn and this is the review of it and uh, I honestly have to say though when you're building this be sure be careful about the joints because the joint is extremely tight I'm not kidding I broke I broke uh, the right arm the whole arm I broke it and now I can't move it and uh, I just basically I just you know fix screw it because the whole MS joint is extremely tight so if you want to move around be sure you hold the base of the joint then move it do not push it do not pull it you're gonna break it I I basically just broke one of my arm and now it's kind of uncompleted and for me the legs the tight uh, how tight the legs is 
the tightness of the legs is fine, but the arms is seriously ridiculously tight that is very hard to move around. It's a very good thing that, you know, a band that actually listen to our opinions and turn the RG to more sustainable, but they at the same time they didn't think about that it's too tight that it's not gonna it's not gonna be possible to move around. But just saying that if you are gonna if you build this compound, be sure you be very careful about when you about when you're moving the joint around because you might end up broke an arm or a leg like me. Just saying that. Anyways, uh, but I actually think that for such a small scale and then I actually manage to make the whole gunpowder transformable is a actually a very good job and I will show you later and when I introduce a new movement I will I will may talk about it more and right now let's just jump straight into the review. Alright as usual let's start with the head so the head you know uh, the head this time actually is limited movement so you can basically just move side to side very by very very little because uh, the torso the torso got a piece here actually blocking the way so the head is actually got some limited movements and I'm very sorry that uh, if I have to show you the head transformation I wouldn't be able to I need to use the fixed uh, antenna so this is the story when I was cutting the parts one night because I was too sleepy and I accidentally cut the joint of one of the transformable uh, antennas and I broke it and I I can't I can't super I can't super glue it back, so I have to use the fixed antenna as well. That was that that's all me. Okay, that's almost my fault. I was too sleepy when I was cutting the parts, and I accidentally cut the joint. <laughs> and so, which is why I using the uh, which is why I have to use the fixed position uh, antennas. But uh, that's another story. I will talk about later. So you know the transformation. I will show you later on the parts and the torso, uh, and the to and the whole. Uh, upper body is able to move 360 and I have to say though this the torso uh, the the joint between the torso and the waist is not pretty tight so if you you know you have use a bit of force to pull it the upper body and the and the lower body will separate apart just give you a warning about that and and this time the unicorn actually does a good job so it does have a clip at uh, at the back of the uh, torso so it prevents having that uh, very sloppy um, torso movements and it actually tightened it up and it's a very good job about that alright so now you're all wondering why I removed the uh, shoulder piece because I have to hold the base to spin it around otherwise I'm gonna break it again <laughs> because, I'll, because I already break this arm so that's why I think if I take off the shoulder armor it will probably be a safer practice and by the way the shoulder armor does can move it can move it's very tight joint as you can see I need to push it very hard to push it back so uh, just by the way if you want to uh, you know soften the joints uh, I can recommend you use a hair dryer put it to the put it to the hottest and then blow it to the joint not the whole arm okay blow it against the joint and then it will soften a bit up so you can you know kind of easy to move around but but best way is just be careful when you're moving around and I recommend you if you're using the hair dryer don't blow it about a minute because it's gonna get very loose and uh, probably about if you're using a hair dryer to you know kind of soften the joint I probably will recommend you just blow it about 20 seconds that's probably gonna be that's gonna probably do it but remember don't blow it on the arm joint blow it on the shoulder joint because the shoulder joint is seriously so tight and it's very hard to move around so let's see so softly and uh, the so the arm can lift up about 90 that's maximum and uh, I have to be very careful right now I don't want to break it it's very frustrating not to break it and the whole arm can do a 360 spin if you do it very carefully as you can see I spin it very slow right now because I'm afraid I'm gonna break it as you can see dust can do 360 the whole arm is bendable about uh, nearly 140 and the arm, the base of the arm can spin around, but just be careful. It's very tight, so just be careful. But it actually can spin about ninety because during there's a, actually a huge, huge uh, save, uh, beam saber, uh, beam saber part, beam saber part on the uh, arm, so which is why it can't move too far. And actually, as usual, RG stuff, you can actually move the. Oh, sorry, I didn't know the camera was loose. The focus, just give me a second. 
So as usual, like the R other RGs, this RG is capable of moving uh, about 40-50 degrees to the front. And also, the, hand, the, the hands option down below is actually very tight as well. So be careful when you move around because this hand option at down below is very tight as well. And also, the beam sabers can flip to forward if you wish to use it and you can insert a beam saber effect part on it. And may I remind you the beam saber effect part is also very hard as well. So when you pull it out, be sure to don't break it, okay? So you can attach on it and when you pull it out, just pull it very gently because sometimes it might get very tight. All right, next, let's talk about the, uh, the waist part. The waist part, each, uh, so let me just move away, each piece, each waist piece uh, armor is actually movable for about 90 degrees and here we ha even have a thruster detail on at the back way as well I'm not sure you can see it or not it's... let me try to focus it I'm not sure can you see it or not but uh, the here we do have a thruster detail and it's very impressive and for now so actually the whole legs is capable of bending a very good angle actually a lot of movement and the feet below down here, you can move front and back, uh, slightly side to side as well. And the whole and the whole legs is capable of um, it's capable of kicking to the side about uh, ninety degrees. Let me just move back. As I just said, the whole figure's uh, joint is actually very tight, so I'm being as careful as I could. Try not to break it because I will break it off. And you can move the legs back 90 degrees as well. Front kick, no problem at all. 90 degrees again. Just be very careful when you're moving it. I keep saying it because I just want to know that it's, it sucks when you break and joint. At the torso, we do have the cockpit open uh, function. So you know you just pull up you just pull up the front piece here and you can see the cockpit. As you can see, cycle frames around it, and you can just put it back. Oh and reminder when you pull out the cockpit it actually will uh, pull up the uh, the armor piece that next to uh, next to the head as well so be sure you push it down once you uh, finish opening the cockpit now let's talk about the backpack so the backpack this time is uh, of course is movable so the what so the back wings I call this part wings because I don't know what kind of came up and actually every part on this uh, backpack is actually movable. You can spin around 90, 180, whatever you want to do it. But I want to save it until the transformation, so that's why I'm not doing it. But uh, by the way, if you have OCD, you're probably gonna get killed by this thing because it actually doesn't match up when you close the uh, wings at the back. It doesn't match up. So if you have OCD, you're probably gonna kill. You're probably gonna kill yourself. <laughs> I'm just saying that. And I actually get a little bit uncomfortable whenever I see these wings can't be, you know, close, completely perfect when they are not in NTD mode. But I guess uh, we'll just live with it. We'll just live with it. Live with it, okay? So now we'll follow the instruction book and we will treat these uh, procedure very seriously because first I don't want to break it, second uh, I want to transform it properly so that is why I'm following it. So now first you need to remove the head and the backpack it's very easy to remove, just basically just pull up and it should be off and for the destroy mode first uh, we have a little lock at the back as you can see here oh I, can, I will point it for you here we have a lock it's actually pre preventing the uh, the most uh, the gunpla to accidentally anti deed and it's pretty tight though so I would just recommend you use it use a tool to you know kind of pull it up carefully so now you should have something like this as you can see the waist part actually here is uh, extended then you need to pull very softly okay pull very softly from the arms pull very softly and then you need to pull out the just pull out the torso pull it very generally gently gently pull it out don't pull it too hard then this part is impossible to reach with your finger so borrow a tool to flip up the side now it should be like this then now it's very simple you just need to pull off just need to pull off the uh, front the armor piece here at the torso just slightly pull it off and now it will show you the cycle frame in it and so now when it so the whole thing done you should have something like this <sighs> my camera doesn't focus again 
my camera is just being very, very bad. And so now when you finish it, you should have something like this. So now I will show the head and the backpack transformation. So the head, uh, during the time problem, I already switched it to the uh, uh, extended antenna mode. As I said, the, mo uh, the transformer antenna, I cut it, the joint, I cut the joint, so that's why I used the fixed position one. Because switching the fixed position one is very annoying, so I already cut that part out because uh, it's gonna it's gonna take very long, so I don't want I don't want to bore get you guys bored. So basically, you pull out the head and then you just basically rotate the face to the Gundam face, and then now you pluck it back in, and then rotate the side of the face, and then pluck it back in, something like this. So this is extended mode. So now you should have a Gundam face and an extended antenna, and all you have to do is just pluck it back and just put it back onto the. Uh, MS and there you go transformed and now I'll show you the backpack first the backpack uh, So first you move up both side uh, you move both side uh, of the wings up then rotate night uh, then rotate 180 and Then you flip up and then you flip up the wings so you should become like this So now you should have something like this then you extend then you extend the uh, wings out and it should become like this. It's very simple. You just do a couple rotation and it's done. And then now you just need to gen gently pull the side of the uh, side of the backpack to make the thrusters. As you can see here, the thrusters uh, stand uh, stand out, and you should have something like this. It's very simple. And then we will put it back to the main frame later. So. You pull out, you pull out the side of the arm, and then you push down, and then you push back the uh, joint here, and then it's it's hold on, and then for the for the shoulder, it's pretty easy actually. It's just you need to lift up the shoulder first, lift up the shoulder armor, and then you rotate the side of the shoulder to the uh, adjust the angle, and now you should, and then you clip it back, and that's just very basic. It just become like this, very easy. No, it doesn't take a doesn't take a lot of work. It's very easy. And now by finishing it, and then you clip back, clip the backpack on, and it should become like this. Very easy, right? So now let's show the uh, the waist part and the legs part first. So the waist part, um, so for the front armor, you just push, you just pull up, and then you simply slide it to, and then you simply slide it, and there you have it. And the side skirt, you just need to catch on the point and then you need to pull the whole thing down. It's pretty hard to pull it, so give me a second. After you pull the side skirt, you should have something like this. It's now extended and then for the back way, it's very simple. You just lift up the, you just need to lift up the thrusters and done. It's very simple. And then for the legs, first you need to uh, flip the up. I cut the whole thing off. So uh, you pull off the side of the thigh, and then uh, and then you pull it down. Then next, you just flip it up, and then now you hold the back of the legs, and then you simply just pull it down very gently, and just push it all the way to the bottom. And now the cycle frame should be uh, come up, and now you just clip the clip the um, legs back, and then now you move up to the down, and then there's a there's a little gray part here. You 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 de de attached it and then you simply pull down the legs and then clip it back in simple as that and then now you take off both the you take off both of the uh, the lower leg armor it's a bit hard to take it off so you might want to use some tools so now I just do a quick adjustment so you need to adjust this front of the feet and then you need to clip the uh, legs armor back up and you should have something and then you should have the uh, legs armor aligned with the uh, with the part that you just pulled and now you flipped up the speed armor and then you replace the uh, the small piece of armor that you detach on the feet and then you rotate it 90 degrees and then just put it back now when the whole transformation is completed you should have something like this and I gotta say though it's pretty impressive to have a, such a small scale and then you can actually uh, activate the entity mode without actually, you know, sw uh, path swapping. You do, you do need to do some path swapping, but you know, not that, not that like uh, tear the whole thing apart and put it back again. You simply just move around. And I'm very impressive on the MS frame that actually is possible to make the entity mode. But uh, I wish the arm joint is not that tight because every time I pull it, 
I feel like I'm gonna break it. So, uh, you know, just extra care on the arms. The legs, though, the legs I think is pretty fine with it, but uh, but still be careful about it because I don't really know when it's gonna break apart anyway. So just be careful when you're moving around. And now the beam saber, uh, it actually can flip out completely since the uh, this piece of armor is moved back so you can now flip to the front and you can make some poses with it and this is basically transformation so now I'm going to up to the uh, accessory part for the accessory we got a uh, party figure as usual and then a pair of open hands and a pair of weapon holding hands and uh, I did forget to show you how to expand the shield since the shield is a part of expansion so the shield actually is pretty easy so let me just move it up so you can see it so actually it's very simple you just all you have to do is just move out the uh, the X of the shield then you just basically pull it I mean just pull it uh, spit out just give me a second and now you should have something like this you pull it and then now you pull the bottom Just pull it one bit by bit so you don't over pull it. So now, after you pull it, you should have something like, like this. You should have something like this. And then now you pull the bottom as well. That's the full expansion of the shield. And the shield can attach on the hand uh, based on the based on the uh, connector, and then oh, you can attach on the hand. But it's too large to do that, so I would recommend you to pull it like that. And you can switch around now. You, when you switch the connector, you can you can simply find the joint, and then you pull it at the back, and you can you can recreate the scene of uh, this. Benji Norn carrying the shield at the back and the last thing is the beam magnum and you know the beam magnum is extendable and then you can actually pull out the ammo and put it at the back of the Banshee that's joint at the back waist similarly you just aim on the joint and then just push it and it will stick on there and also we got a grenade launcher at the bottom and you can actually pull it out and there's a little piece here you rotate it effect part of the grenade launcher and I think that is a pretty cool feature plus this is the effect part you can pull it out and then put it on to put it onto the gun puller and but I'm not gonna do it and the full the full uh, motion is to be like this just give me a second so the full motion is like this so now it's been so now it's been in there and by the way the grenade launcher is uh, it's not really stable so uh, please be careful when you're messing around with it and next thing the last thing actually put it on the hand and you can store it like this the beam magnum it's a pretty cool feature though I think and this is basically the introduction of it so now this is the end of the review hope you guys enjoyed this uh, I don't know, is it my problem or not? I feel like my Banshee Norn is a little tilted to the left. Is it because the shield or is it like this? But when I try to but I when I take off the shield it's still unbalanced. I'm not sure why. Did I just did, did I like kinda mess it up or something? But uh, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, I I did say that I'm very impressed about the technology on the uh, on this real grade. Uh, all I can say is Bandai can make good models depend on if they make it or not because you know the unicorn uh, as I said the unicorn Sailor Gundam and uh, Astray series is probably the the son son of Bandai which is why they would put extra effort uh, to make it better like if we look at RGC Nanju we all know it uses the Mark II frame and it's bad but Bandai can actually came up with something good depending on if they want to do it or not or is they are they being lazy or not 
but all I can say is this is an extremely good uh, design of real graves but uh, I hope I won't mess up next time because I broke an arm uh, I hope, really hope next time if I build the uh, Unicorn Zero One, the original white one, I won't break it again and I'm definitely going to make another review of that. And anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll definitely see you next time. Goodbye.